So Jim McGuinness returns as Donegal Senior Football Manager. Wow, I did not see that coming. I'm going to be completely honest. I did not see that coming. I mean, don't get me wrong. You always had the inkling that maybe one day Jim McGuinness would return as a manager, as a senior manager in Gaelic football. But having done a lot of work in soccer over the past couple of years, being involved with Celtic and obviously being involved with different teams abroad. I think he was involved with one team in America at one point and obviously having been involved with Derry City, their soccer team in the last couple of sides or in the last couple of years. But absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy. It's officially confirmed he is back as the Donegal senior football manager. And to be honest with you, I just, I can't believe it. I really, really cannot believe that he has come back. And like, as I said, you always got the inkling that maybe he would come back. I always thought maybe he'd leave it till, till further down the line. I always thought maybe he would go to a different county um, just because he's all, he's already been there and done it with Donegal. Maybe he'll want to prove himself with someone else. And and the fact is as well, like is Donegal, like is it the most ambitious job in the world to go to right now? Probably not. I was thinking about this before making the video. I was thinking like, is this... Is it gonna? It's it could act. It's gonna be a lot tougher for me for Jim McGuinness with this Donegal team than the Donegal team. A couple, you know, in sort of the early 2010s, where obviously he went on to win that All Ireland in 2012, because that team had some serious footballers. And let's not forget, Donegal were on the were, were already brewing something at underage. They had a bit of success at under 20 level. They were building something. Donegal. They had a lot of very very good players. Jim McGuinness had been involved at underage level, and you had the likes of Michael Murphy who came through, Colm McFadden obviously who came through as well. You had some serious footballers, Roy McHugh, a young Patrick McBurty, a whole host of talent from one to fifteen defensively. They were very very strong as well. They had some of the best defenders in the game. So Donegal from one to fifteen were a serious team. Like don't get me wrong, Jim McGuinness took them on to the next level, and as we've seen since Jim McGuinness left in twenty fourteen. Donegal haven't even got to an all Ireland semi-final. They've had a couple of Ulster Championship success, but they haven't been anywhere near the levels that Jim McGuinness set for them. And I think Jim McGuinness, what he done when he was in charge from Donegal is he took a what was a relatively okay team and he made you know and he turned them into greats um, by winning that all Ireland in 2012 and obviously getting them to the final in 2014 and beating Dublin in the process. And I think you know a lot of people probably forget and, and maybe. You know, a lot of younger people who are maybe watching this video and the younger generation of GA fans, like a lot of people probably won't remember what Donegal were like pre Jim McGuinness. And to put things into perspective, Donegal were probably a bit like what Down have been in the last couple of years. Maybe what like maybe what Derry were like before Gallagher came in. Like, you know, they were absolutely nowhere near the levels that Jim McGuinness had set for Donegal when he came in and. There's that quote that he's obviously said in his book and he's said it in different podcasts and everything else. He came into the Donegal dressing room, team meeting, wherever it was, and he said, if anyone here doesn't think we're going to win the All-Ireland, I want you to get out now. And I think he said a couple of people laughed in the room and different things like that. Like Donegal, it was a party boy attitude in Donegal at the time. They were a team of, they had a, you know, a lot of very, very good players. But Jim McGuinness... You know, he didn't beat around the bush. He wasn't afraid to get rid of big players. He wasn't afraid to get rid of big names. He wasn't afraid to shake it up. He wasn't afraid to say the things to some of these Donegal players that previous managers and previous people close to these players hadn't said before. And it was a serious reality check for a lot of these players. And, you know, the, the good players stuck around, the serious players, the serious heads stuck around the likes of kevin cassidy and others were you know told they, they didn't have a place in the squad and, and it's kind of incredible to think he was one of Donegal's best footballers at that moment in time and he was you know exonerated from the squad a year before their all order win in 2012 you know the thing about jim mcginnis coming back is are Donegal in a worse place right now than they were when he took over i'm not so sure and um, we all remember before jim mcginnis took charge they had a game against Armagh where they were absolutely hammered and they looked a million miles off competing for Ulster, let alone competing for an All-Ireland. This Donegal side have had a very, very bad season, don't get me wrong, um, relegated from Division 1. They're in a similar position, I think, to when Jim McGuinness first came in. At the same time, these group of players, a lot of these group of players have proven that they can compete at the highest level in Ulster. You know, got to an Ulster final in 2021, moments away from winning it, it went to extra time, if people remember. They were in the final in 2020. 
won Ulster champions in 18 and 19. I know a good couple of those players have retired and there has been changes in the panel. There's been younger and fresher faces that have come in in the last couple of seasons. The likes of Caelan McGonagall, the likes of Niall O'Donnell, Shane O'Donnell as well, Oshin Gallen. A few, like a lot of younger players have been integrated into the team in the last couple of seasons and it probably is a different side to the team you know even back in 2019 in 2019 a lot of people looked at Donegal as the closest challengers to Dublin they they were very competitive I remember with Kerry they drew a Kerry in the Super 8s and they looked like a serious team up until they eventually lost to Mayo in that final game and you do look at these this bunch you know this group of team and, and these group of players I think the underage isn't there in the last couple of years I don't think there's a huge I don't think it's as good of a prospect, this Donegal team, as it was when Jim McGuinness first took over. But then again, you know, did anyone see Michael Murphy becoming the player that he was? Did anyone see Colm McFadden being the player that he was? Roy McHugh as well, Patrick McBurty. You know, it could be arguably said that Jim McGuinness made those players. He made those players better. He gave the belief to those players. He turned them into serial winners. And you look at this Donegal side and you've got players in there like Michael Langan, who I'm a big fan of, Kayla McGonagall, Kieran Thompson. You've still got Patrick McBurthy knocking about. Sean Patton between the sticks, I think, is a very, very good goalkeeper. He's got the distribution um, and he can play that modern role of a modern-day goalkeeper. They've got all the, the right assets. Um, but it will be tough for Jim McGuinness because I think back in 20, you know, 2011, 2012, there was probably less teams, less teams to compete with. The teams were probably better who were competing for the All-Ireland. I think the Dublin side, 2013, 2014, 2015, even 2012, 2011, that Dublin version is better than the Dublin team right now, I think, personally. I think the, the Kerry side that's around right now is better. You know, the Kerry team today is better than the Kerry team back then. So that probably cancels that one out. But then I think you have more sides knocking around now in Ulster. Armagh, Derry have all since got their act together. Monaghan have come on, even though they were fairly good back then as well. So it's going to be very interesting and... You kind of do look at it and think, you know, when Jim McGuinness led Donegal to that All-Ireland in 2012, it's one of the stories in the GEA. And I think, you know, a lot of people criticise Jim McGuinness for his style of football, the ultra-defensive football, the blanket defence, and the model that was set. And a lot of other managers have since followed it and, and sort of put their own stamp on it. You look at this Derry side under Rory Gallagher, who were very similar. And obviously Gallagher coming from the same... School of Thought, as Jim McGuinness, he's obviously Jim McGuinness' second-hand man during Donegal's All-Ireland win. And we've seen a lot of teams follow that precedent and follow that sort of ideology that Jim McGuinness set as manager. Club teams play like that, you know, up and down the country. Kilku, very notable for playing a very, very similar style. Of course, teams have put their own stamp on it and they've done things in their own way. But Jim McGuinness was one of the first very early adopters of that very rigid over the top defensive structure look it worked at the end of the day if it works and it wins you in all ireland and it wins you a championship it, you have to say it was worth it you know and, and donegal as i said before they've only won two all irelands in their lifetime 2012 and 1992 jim mcginnis part of both of those two teams once as a player and, and the other as a manager at the end of the day if it gets you in all ireland if it gets you over the line if it gets you, you success then it doesn't matter you know and that's that's ultimately what it's all about. It's about walking up those Hogan steps. And I, I can guarantee those Donegal fans, those Donegal players, when they're walking up those Hogan steps, when the fans are in the ground and they're lifting them or they're watching them lift that Sam Maguire, they do not care about how they've done it. Um, and even at that, there was moments where Donegal would mix it up. They would go and attack. They would press up on kickouts. They would play a different type of style than what we'd seen. I, I, think, I think it's going to be very fascinating. It's going to be very fascinating to see what type of management team he obviously brings in with him. I haven't seen those details just yet. I don't think they've been confirmed as of right now. I think it's going to be exciting to see how he gets on with Donegal. As I said, I think there's more to compete with in Ulster now than there was when he first took, in char took charge of Donegal back in the early 2010s. You'll remember Derry were nowhere near the team that they are right now. Tyrone were in massive transition. Um, their team from winning the All-Ireland in 2008, like that era was very much over. Armagh were in the doldrums in many ways in the early 2010s. I mean, they steeped down nearly to Division 4. You know, they were struggling in Division 3 at different points. Monaghan were there, don't get me wrong, and they were a serious team back then, won a couple of Ulster titles themselves. But there definitely is more now for Donegal to compete with in Ulster, in my opinion, and even in the All-Ireland series as well. Maybe the quality isn't the same. You don't have... That Dublin team, you know, that Dublin team in in the 2010s probably isn't as 
or was a lot better, you would say, than the Dublin team right now. But I think it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very, very fascinating. And Jim McGuinness obviously spent, what, four seasons in charge of Donegal. He won two Ulster titles. He also, three Ulster titles. Of course, he took Donegal to two all Ireland finals and won one of them. You know, will he get the same amount of success in the next four seasons? It's very, very hard to say that he will because of what's out there. If Jim McGuinness can go on and lead Donegal to an all Ireland title, he goes down in the... You know, I think when we look at the greatest Gaelic football managers of all time, we look at Mickey Hart. We look at Mick O'Dore, Sean Boylan, Jim Gavin, Paddy O'Shea. We look at some of the absolute greats that have managed Kerry. Jack O'Connor deserves to be in that conversation, in my opinion, as well. And I think if Jim McGuinness can land an all Ireland with Donegal, he's right up there in the conversation. I think some people would already put him in the conversation considering Donegal are probably nowhere near, they, they've nowhere near the, the underage or nowhere near the history as the likes of um, Dublin and Kerry and I suppose Mickey Hart landed Tyrone their first ever All-Ireland in fairness. But I think if Jim McGuinness can land Donegal the All-Ireland, there's a question that maybe he is the greatest football manager of all time and he's definitely in the conversation. Will he go and do it though? I would have to say right now I don't think he will just because of the teams that are out there. But at the same time, for Donegal, it's a building process. And if you asked any Donegal fan right now, with Jim McGuinness being in charge, do they expect them to win the All-Ireland in the next couple of years? I don't even know if they would expect it, just because of the fact of the teams that are out there and because of how far they've looked this season and even at times in previous years in the All-Ireland series. But it's going to be very fascinating. It's going to be very interesting following Donegal in the next couple of seasons. Excited already now for next season already having seen seen this news it's going to be very interesting to see his approach with Donegal in the you know you know does obviously we know Jim McGuinness's style from when he was Donegal manager does he evolve it does he do something different does he make us think a little bit differently about the game once again it's going to be very fascinating to see leave a like subscribe let me know in the comments down below what did you think or what do you think about this appointment and let me know as well like for any Donegal fans What's the expectation with him coming in? Because he, he, he led Donegal to what seemed an absolute miracle in 2012 and getting them back to the final in 2014. Can he do something similar in his second spell as Donegal manager? It's going to be very interesting to see. Leave a like, subscribe. Speak to you soon.